Lothic just keep laughing, Brian. I mean, we were laughing in the green room. He stopped. He purposely put on the, you know, he did the, you know, it was, it's okay to come in laughing, Brian. Honest. Uh huh. Enter laughing. Enter, enter laughing. Well, we forgot in our last video together to tell people to follow you on my Tesla weekend everywhere you go. Um, and uh, that would be YouTube and that would be, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, X. You X. Know, formerly known as Twitter and all that stuff. So, uh, and then um, uh, Patreon, for sure, Patreon. All right, now, having said all that, I want to talk about Optimus. Can we talk about Optimus? Never heard of it. It's my, favorite, me in. it's my favorite thing in the entire world. I mean, there's just nothing. I mean, I can heart, I just, it's, I'd rather have an Optimus than a Model 3 performance. Mm. I mm. maybe take an, a Model 3 Plaid ahead of an Optimus, if there ever is such a thing. All right. <laughs> we, we have been having a fire hose of information. We've been sucking, drinking from a fire hose of information over the last weeks, especially over the last four days, five days. And uh, there's been a bunch of timelines now kind of thrown about a bunch of timelines, Brian. Um, I'm just I'm just busy picturing that that's going to be your thumbnail. The four fire hose. Ooh. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah, Sarah's my, Sarah does my thumbnail. Sarah, could you work that up? Okay. Anyway. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's so... All right. <laughs> Maybe. So we are now looking at, this is kind of, I would say the average timeline out there right now. Hundreds this year. Um, hand built, production built, whatever, but hundreds this year all in the Tesla factory, maybe a couple in uh, first tier factories or maybe in SpaceX or over in, in uh, 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 the Boring Company or something like that, but basically all internal in the first year. That seems to be the average timeline. Then next year, maybe 10,000 still largely in the Tesla warehouses and stuff or manufacturing facilities, but Elon did say he would start shipping next year. I don't think he means to first tier. That would tell me he's planning to ship to somebody outside the family. And then maybe 100,000 in 2026, and then big numbers in 2027. What do you think about that new time? That's not my timeline. That's the average compiled timeline from all of these different folks that I'm seeing right now. So I think... Uh... Looking at disruption is challenging. Spotting disruption, being able to predict it is impossible. And uh, very few people have been lucky enough to get it right. Uh, there is an obstacle with Optimus and that obstacle is the intelligence. How close is the AI to being able, the, the hardware we've seen, the hardware looks fantastic. I don't know what little improvements remain to be made. If they said, nope, hardware is basically done, I would believe them. If it's, str if it's strong, it appears dexterous enough. It's however strong you build the actuators to be. The hardware, I believe, is reasonably solved. I'm going to turn my heater off here. Uh, is reasonably solved. Then you've got the intelligence. Is that done? Is it 90% done, 99, or are we in the March of Nines? And that is the infinite question mark. And I don't believe anyone outside of Tesla knows, and I don't believe anyone inside of Tesla knows. And considering the incredible challenges they've faced with artificial intelligence, knowing when to turn on windshield wipers, my confidence in their ability to apply lessons is really impacted. I saw a conversation, I don't know if I mentioned this last week, between someone on X and an engineer who works on the windshield wipers. And the, the engineer said, we do look at the data. We The camera tries to see when to turn them on, turns them on. And if you immediately turn it off, that gets fed back into the, Mothership saying that was wrong. And I said, couldn't you have trained it on a rain sensor? <laughs> and the pushback, the pushback I got was, 
that's another thumbnail you could use. The pushback I got on that was that they, well, yes, but humans are going to be more accurate than the rain input sensor. Right. That's why you use both. Use yeah. the rain sensor the and human. the human overriding it and train on that. I'm not, well, you don't know better than them. No, I don't. <laughs> but I can tell you that the 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 stew is 45% salt at this point, and that's the wrong recipe. I can tell you when the recipe doesn't work. And if we can't solve windshield wipers, I think putting it to use in a factory around heavy equipment is a bit premature. Putting it in a position where it could accidentally knock a baby stroller into traffic may not be the wisest move just yet, depending on the baby. Some babies need pushing into traffic, Randy. There's just no two ways about it. Oh my goodness. I think will YouTube be banning me for this particular show? I don't know what we're gonna have. Uh Brian, Brian, Brian. I oh. always do the I always do the tests on your channel to find that's, out. So that's, okay. that's where we how we know where the limits are. So so I would agree with you. Of course, it's all about the brain. And again, if I take the co combination of all these videos that I've spent hours and hours and hours listening to this last week, it sounds as if the training, and I break training into two parts. Training is doing the actual function, putting in the screw, uh, tightening the bolt, screwing in the screw, um, moving this from here to there, uh, whatever it is, th that's kind of the 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 operational benefit that it's going to be providing. And then it's got working in an environment. So whether it's going to accidentally run into a piece of equipment or fall down on its face at a, the wrong time or hurt somebody that's standing next to them. So these would all be environmental issues that it has to uh, deal with. Um, uh, Elon specifically stated, and they talked about on the call, that the product is already doing useful tasks. So you, and we've seen it do. It was folding a t-shirt. It may, you may want it to fold it a lot faster. You may want it to fold it a little better, but that's, uh, that's, you know, we're talking about how much more difficult will it be to get faster and, and, and cleaner. So I don't know, it seems like the useful task part of it is well along the way to being solved. Now the environmental issue might be the bigger deal, but I'll let you talk. So the folding of a shirt, that wasn't the intelligence doing that. You could see at the edge of the frame, that was a human teleoperator. That's proving out the dexterity of the hardware. That to me is not in question. I think that's, if that's not solved, it, it's it's not a, it, it, it just, it's there. It's there. But the intelligence part is not. And I, when I heard on the earnings call, Elon saying, well, you know, maybe in, you know, when I heard his timeline, I thought, oh, Randy's going to, Randy's <laughs> going to shed a tear or two over this because I know a lot of optimists, optimists like Randy are very excited for this to happen any second. And what I hear Elon saying is it's not ready. And when I look at the amount of compute that they're bringing online to solve in artificial intelligence problems, that would be driving. That would be Optimus. That would be the windshield wipers. Uh, that a lot of these things are still quite far from ready. And the problem with solving a problem for the first time is you don't always know how long that solution is going to take. And to me, that's where we are. We are in that valley of the unknown, waiting to see what's on the other side. So you know, of course, that I could care less whether it ever does anything in a factory. I'm still, I just want it for those back rubs. You know this about me. We, everyone I think knows this about you. Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. So <laughs> uh, it's going to be, it's, there's a, if we take the evidence that we saw of what the, uh, the auto training of the, uh, uh, the, um, oh, what are they? I just forgot the word, the word for what they, the teleoperators. We saw the teleoperators in that Stanford lab creating the, the task, uh, using the teleoperation. And then after 50 or 100 times, even less sometimes, they were able to do the task. I'm assuming Tesla is at least as far advanced as those three grad students are up at Stanford. 
So uh, if teleoperators can do it, it, it uh, Elon talked about just visual, just watching uh, a, a human do it and then and then doing it. We know that's also what uh, figure, what uh, uh, Brett Adcock has been talking about is just watching and then doing. Um, I'm, I'm still unclear in why this seems to the world to be so far away when we're seeing so many examples of actual uses. I mean, yes, I did need somebody in my office to turn on the coffee maker, not, <laughs> but it's the, it's the idea. And I think if the, if the, if that uh, robot is currently being teleoperated to fold that shirt and it does it 50 or hundred times, I think you just then say, okay, let's see how you do. And I don't, I, I, I don't know. I'm having a hard time imagining the complexity, but maybe that's because I'm not in the lab. It seems like it wouldn't be that hard. <laughs> so if we go back to what was it? 2016, I believe eight years ago, Waymo did their big demonstration of driverless cars. Was it 16? Was it even longer? It might have been 2012 or 14, where they had a blind man get behind the wheel of a car and drive all over town. He got lunch. He picked up his dry cleaning. And, of course, there was a sheriff sitting in the passenger seat uh, just so that uh, for, to make it a legal demonstration. And there was an engineer in the back seat just so he could supervise. Looking at that, the world was confident self-driving would be solved within a year. It would be widespread within a year. The engineers at that company and every company believed that everyone would have it solved by 2020. The director of the project, and I don't remember if this was the CEO of, of Google or just the, of that division, said, how soon will this be out? Let me put it to you this way. I don't think my kids will ever get a license. And his kids at the time were, I think, 10 and 12, which means now they're voting and in college and maybe even out of college. And uh, I believe that uh, that, as far as I can tell, hasn't happened. There's a scalability problem that Waymo faces. They can't get out of their little geofenced area and they won't drive on highways. That's no. not useful. No. So could someone have explained to me eight, 10 years ago, why it hasn't happened yet, why we're still stuck waiting. And the answer is, when you do something for the first time, there are unknown obstacles and the horizon is uncertain. I've long said we are no longer, for the longest time, I said that self-driving was just beyond the horizon. We don't know how far out it is, but we can see the smoke. Well, now it's, we have, we, it's there. We can see it. Uh, we have land is in sight. Uh, we just can't find a port and we don't know how to cross the reef. It's right there. It's so close. It'll drive you crazy, but you are still deadly far from shore. All so right. why do we, why do we need all these things? You know, what is the obstacle? I don't know. And I'm not certain the engineers working on it. know either. All right. So let's go back to the t-shirt. I happen to know something about the t-shirt printing business. And part of the t-shirt <laughs> printing business is of course, folding them and putting them into a bag and then putting that bag into a box, et cetera. That's part of the game. Well, there are machines you, you can buy today that will fold that shirt. It goes in one end, it folds the shirt beautifully. It goes then to another station. It puts it into a poly bag. It then seals the poly bag, shoots it out the other end. And you, there's, I, I haven't seen a machine that do, does this, but there's probably even a machine that would then put it into a box. But usually that's a human portion of the job. So if I have a machine that can be programmed using various things to be able to fold that shirt, put it in a bag, seal it, etc. Then if I have a bot and I, I that that is got the dexterity, it's got the hardware to be able to do it, I could hard program it to go through that process. I could mm -hmm. I could just say, okay, here's the programming, do this process. You're going to stand in the same spot all day long. You don't get to move. You don't get to be around any other equipment. Humans have, we're going to box it in. We're not going to let any humans be anywhere near you, just like other kinds of equipment that, 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 which actually no, even those t-shirt folding machines don't do that. <laughs> you can have people around. In fact, you do have people around them. Uh, but anyway, let's just say we do all those things to make it that way. 
it would seem to me you can make a machine, you can make the bot do very specific tasks at this point. And I've made the argument with others that maybe that is what Brett Adcock intends to do. That he will, his are going to be, I'm going to build it. It's going to be able to do this and it'll be do this and then it'll do this and then it'll do this. And then as, as I get more and more things that it can do, I'll bring those out. Where it sounds like Elon may not want to go out there until it's a general machine. What do you think? I think that is 100% right. I think most companies do not have the luxury. <laughs> yeah, savor it. <laughs> savor this one, Randy Kirk. I think most companies do not have the luxury of a of deep pockets, of sufficiently deep pockets. I think most companies building these products are saying, we have to hurry up and get this out to market. How do we do that? And if uh, Brett Adcock's company is able to say, look, we can we can assign little boxed off tasks for it to do and it's ready today ship it ship it but there's only a hundred customers that you know of there are more and if yeah well we can't manually code in a million tasks why not <laughs> if each task only costs less than it co than the the money you're bringing in have a million boxes in his head. The storage space in his head is quasi infinite. And if there's not enough, you just download the pack that addresses this one use case, ship it. And I think that's, I think there's room for both approaches in the market, but we know that that's something Tesla likes to do. Getting the boring tunnel to the point where it could be autonomous would be the easiest task uh, the autonomous group has had to face. Yeah. But they're not going to do it because their philosophy is when it works everywhere, it'll work everywhere, including in the tunnel. And I think the second obstacle is they really want drive-by-wire so some vandal can't jump on the front and grab the wheel yeah. and cause an accident, which is a, a real concern. I mean, that's a con that would be a concern to me. Right. So I think the, uh, yeah, I think they're, not trying to solve individual problems at Tesla. They're trying to solve all the problems because when you churn the butter, it doesn't matter if you're 90% done. There's no butter until you get it done. And then it's all done all at once. And that's, uh, that's how the FSD butter is made. Well, you know, last, last, uh, yesterday, when we did this, you brought philosophy into the program and now you're bringing in homespun, you know, stuff. I mean, Brian, is there any limit to your capabilities? <laughs> <laughs> so I've been in the I've been hours and hours in the car recently talking to my 13 year old about different courses I took in college. So I guess maybe that's what's going on is they're all kind of brought back to the surface. Very painful memories, Randy. Very painful. I see. I see. Well, I, I went to Cal Poly Pomona, which is an ag school. You know, uh, I, I didn't study any agriculture there, but I didn't know. Did you also go to an ag school to learn to churn butter? <laughs> I, <laughs> I did not. I you went, did not. <laughs> uh, no, I went to the University of Washington. So that's a, I don't know. I'd call it a normal school. I'd call it, if anything, a football school. A football school. There you go. Yes. Yeah. I went to the biggest party. Well, actually, I guess at the time it was considered to be the second biggest party school in the country, which was UCLA. Most of my undergrad was at UCLA. Uh, the biggest one was uh, Santa Barbara. I don't know why that would be a party school. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, mm. I, I don't we've gone far afield. I don't know where we where are we going with this? Can we bring this back to anything Tesla? Probably not. Probably not. Probably probably best to cut our losses and oh, no. and and uh, and thank people for being here. Yeah, and liking and subscribing <laughs> and following you everywhere on my Tesla weekend and all that stuff. Brian, thank you for joining. A me. pleasure, Randy. Thank you. All right. all right, great. And to all of you out there, it has been great talking to you. <laughs>